Corey. Yay, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I last time I low key didn't think I hit record. And so I was freaking out from like the middle to the end because I was like, I'm not oh. sure if I'm recording, <laughs> but we're good this time. We got it. We're recorded. <laughs> God's grace is good and is upon us greatly. <laughs> no, but we're super excited. Today is part two of talking about Jesus in a leadership context. And Kim's done a phenomenal job. If you haven't listened to last week's, please go give it a listen. I was taking notes as we were recording because it was that good. And I know this week is going to be as equally blessed. So without further ado, I'll let you take it away, Kim. Yeah, so thank you for having me once again. I hope our fellow YouTubers aren't sick of me. <laughs> um, but him, the Lord, we're, we're here. To oh stay. yeah, we're in this together. Um, but oh man, I'm I'm just so excited to get into this and to step into what we can learn um, about leadership through the life of Jesus, mm -hmm. who, as we know, is you know, he's the leader of the Christian faith. We look to him. Um, he's our main guy. He's the main character. Um, but there's just so much goodness in, in the gospels that talk about Jesus' life. And so there's a part of me that's like youth leader that wants to be like, hey guys, what did we learn last week? But it's just us too. So I'm just going to give us a quick recap of what we talked about yes. last week because um, I, even I needed that refresher. But Essentially, last week, uh, we started, I started out with having these three components that I feel like the Lord is telling us about leadership through Jesus. Um, we see Jesus lead with surrender. Um, That's cool. And that surrender of like, you know, if you take the image of Jesus on the cross and he's saying, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. And having that posture of like, whatever I do in life, God hear my desires because he cares about the desires of your heart but that heart posture that says yet not my will but yours be done and saying Lord I trust you so whatever you want my heart is just openly surrendered to you and you know it sounds so easy when I say it that way but we talked about how this is a process last week it's it's a daily it takes honestly getting up and it takes a daily yes yes, I will surrender. Yes, I want to clench my fist tight and I want to take it all in for myself. But Lord, I trust you. And in fact, Jesus died on the cross so that I could live freely surrendered, yeah. freely surrendered with my hands open, with my heart open to whatever you want. Um, so we talked about leading in a posture of surrender to God's will. Whatever you're a leader in, that first that first step, I, not first step, I'd say like, it starts with the heart of being surrendered to God, really, in whatever we do. Um, we talked about conviction and choosing conviction over convenience. Yeah. And that, asked, that idea of just like, sometimes life's just going to be a little uncomfortable. Things are just not going to seem, you know, like they're going our way or the way that we envisioned. Um, but choosing conviction every day. Um, yeah. And that's hard because you know why would you not want to live in convenience you know I always you know I've been sending a lot of emails lately and I'm like I always say sorry if this inconveniences you because we don't want to inconvenience others we don't want to inconvenience ourselves. but yeah. the Holy Spirit he knows what's best for us and we have to trust that that conviction is better for us than conveniences yeah come on so just saying yes to that and so today I wanted to really um take this home with the idea of living in authority and the idea that Jesus led with these three, but they're not, not one is greater than the other. It's a balance of, of living in surrender, of living in conviction, and also living with authority. Because the funny thing about Jesus and authority is that he was actually, you know, he never really walked into these places and was like, I am the greatest leader of all so step aside <laughs> you know he yeah. he you know he came in in a manger for for out of all things he was yeah. born in a manger with these smelly animals um he was you know he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey um and back then you know we have you know the Pharisees the centurions they ride in with horses um and you know our idea of eloquence and you know this grand 
picture of a king riding in on a horse that makes sense but riding in on a donkey that's just a level of humbleness that that Jesus had and it doesn't give off this picture of oh this man has authority yeah not really um but you know he did these things um he I mentioned this a little bit last week he um was a carpenter Jesus was a carpenter and back then you know you were either high on the social class or you were low on the social class middle class wasn't really a thing um and carpenters weren't considered high um you weren't the lowest on the spectrum but you know if you weren't high you were low so he didn't come in with all this money and he didn't live in a grand palace he he was just an average everyday dude honestly and he didn't have like you know I'm imagining Joseph with the robe of many colors. He didn't own anything like that. Um, And it doesn't prove his authority in an earthly sense. But Jesus, obviously, if you read just a little bit of the Gospels, you know that his authority looks a little different than an earthly definition of authority. Yeah. Um, And I wanted to, you know, take us to scripture where, you know, before the Great Commission, before Jesus is telling his disciples, go and bring my word out into the world, to the ends of the earth. Um, He's telling them, Jesus is saying, all authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. So when he's going around and preaching, you know, all this time, he was doing healings, he was, you know, casting demons out of people, he was teaching, he was preaching. It didn't come from a place of I know I have authority that I'm exerting out into the world. I know I have authority because my my mom is Mary and my dad is Joseph. It came from an authority that was from all of heaven and earth. It came from an authority that came that was from God, essentially. Um, And I think this is a hard concept for us to really take in. And I think as leaders, if anyone out here listening is a leader, you know, it feels good to have some sort of authority. You might be managing a few people that work under you. Um, You might be leading a group of people that are looking to you for guidance, that are looking to you for advice, are looking to you to give them a next assignment. And in a sense, you have that authority over them. And there's some things in our culture that like, if you have authority, you just don't do. I can't think of a good example of this right now, but it's just like, typically like, you know, in, in my work, for example, in my workspace, if you have authority, you have your own office. Your mm-hmm. office probably looks a little nicer than someone else's office. Um, if you have authority, you know, you get to manage your own schedule a little more versus someone who is working at a lower level. They probably have, you know, set hours to their schedule and they kind of do as they're told. Um, yeah. And, you know, that's the way we kind of envision authority. But Jesus tapping into this idea of authority looks a little different because he goes into the places and this authority is really led by surrender and it's really led by conviction um, because he doesn't just go in and it's like I want things this way so therefore it's going to be this way he goes in based off obedience from whatever God is having him do and he also is very convicted of the truth so he goes into these places and he's like Pharisees you're taking this Sabbath idea completely wrong like yeah I know you've been practicing it for many 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 years like this but this is not the way it's going to practice I'm going to heal someone on the Sabbath day and I know that seems like it's breaking the law but I just want a soul for the kingdom mm. and that's kind of authority he comes in with because he's so convicted by knowing this is the truth this is the truth of the father's love this is the truth of who God is and I need that person to know that that's who God is even if it's a Sunday even if it's a Sabbath, even if this is a practice of the last hundred thousands of years, I need them to know that God's love is chasing after them and wants them to be healed today. And that is the truth. And that breaks culture that, yeah. that like totally like shifts and flips what the Pharisees think is God's, you know, truth. But Jesus is like, no, I know what the truth of my father is. I know that he's a relational God. I'm coming in to break that barrier of things are black and white. I'm coming in to fulfill that so that we could just get to have a God that wants relationship. And that's the truth that he came to bring in. And he's like, you know, I love in the, in the scriptures, it doesn't display Jesus as someone who is very hesitant to be like, Oh, I don't know, but the Pharisees, what are they going to think of me? Oh, I don't know. This is what, this is what the scriptures say. This is the scriptures that they've been basing Christianity off of for years and years and years. He just goes and he does it. And that's the authority that that he walks in. But again, this authority isn't from just, oh, I'm so great. I'm the son of God. I can do whatever I want. It's really from a place of, Lord, 
I'm surrendered to you. What is your truth? What is, what is on your agenda today? Mm-hmm. And it comes from a conviction of like, I'm here to deliver that, not in a way that I want it, but in a way that God wants it. Um, I wanted to kind of quick, like deviate a little bit from this idea of Jesus authority to the authority that we have, because, you know, we are all sons and daughters of God. Um, but we get this extra layer to it that Jesus didn't, not Jesus didn't have, but Jesus is essentially promising us when Jesus is not here on earth anymore, we get the Holy Spirit with us. And um, we get to operate with the Holy Spirit. And it's funny, I was having a conversation with an old friend this week. And, uh, you know, we had, you know, we had shared, you know, Bible studies and gone to worship nights together in the past. But um, he would never heard of the Holy Spirit before. And it was funny because I was talking about the Holy Spirit, like everyone knows what the Holy Spirit is. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to bring up John 14 real quick, if I could find the verse. (laughs) And uh, it says, um, let's see, verse 11, I'm sorry, verse 11, John 14, verse 11, it says this, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things Mm -hmm. than these, because I'm going to the Father, so Jesus is going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son, and I think people don't realize, like, you know, when they say, I've accepted Christ in my heart, yeah, you've accepted Christ in your heart, but the Holy Spirit, that's your superpower, like, that's, that's, literally within you if you've accepted christ in your heart the holy spirit is in you that is authority that we get to run and we get to live our lives for christ based it's based off the holy spirit and get this jesus is saying that the works that you do they're even greater than jesus's works like imagine that jesus went around healing people of sicknesses that couldn't that no physician could heal he went around casting out demons that no pharisees could could cast out and they knew they knew the scriptures they knew this book they knew it back and forth um they couldn't even cast it out Jesus did that and he's his promise to you and me is that you can do all those works Mm. and even greater because the Holy Spirit is now in me it's in you and you're in Ohio it's in my mom who's at home it's in our families they're all spread out and they're they're everywhere. Whereas Jesus, he was one man. He was, you know, wherever he went, he, he did miracles, but the Holy Spirit, there's little drops of the Holy Spirit everywhere as we walk. And if we have Christians realize that their authority comes from the Holy Spirit, it's in you. That's your direct access. Then just imagine for a second, how that would change the world we live in. If you have people walking around knowing that I have the authority of Jesus Christ, and that comes from the Holy Spirit, that lets me do the works of the kingdom out there. Um, yeah. And I don't have to hesitate. And so sometimes we read about Jesus and I, I really struggled with this for years. I read about the life of Jesus and I'm like, that's cool. You know, he was able to help Peter walk on water. That's cool. He could, you know, he could um, take, you know, two loaves of bread, five fish and and make it into enough to feed more than 5,000. Um, oh yeah. Doesn't relate to me, but that's cool. Um, but no, it relates to you. And this is the authority. I think we can't really tap into authority until we understand the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, because this power of the Holy Spirit, it's what lets us do modern day miracles. You know, not everyone needs to, you know, maybe you're living in an area where people aren't starving. For example, like being in Malibu area, you know, I don't run into starving people that often, even then I still do. But there's miracles in the workplace that need to happen. There are people, oh, there are schools yeah. that are lost in the workplace. And that in itself, that's a modern day miracle. And it, no, it's not in the Bible, but that's the miracle that the Lord has set you out in that area specifically so that you could release the Holy Spirit into that workplace. You could release that Holy Spirit into your family life so mm-hmm. that whatever miracle the Lord wants to do, he's going to do it. Um, and so I just like, I was talking to my friend about the power of the Holy Spirit and I'm like, no, this is, this is important because this changed my life as a Christian. I didn't know authority until I knew the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And when I knew the Holy Spirit, I started to resonate with the way that Jesus led. 
because Jesus led. He he led with again surrender. He led with conviction, but this was all powered by his authority that he had, knowing that my authority comes from heaven. Yeah. Our authority also comes from heaven, but the Holy Spirit is our helper. That's like, hey, it gives us those little nudges. Like you have the authority to go into those places to release the truth, to release God's healing, to release God's love, to release mm-hmm. his hope in places that are broken. Um, and so that's just kind of the thing that I think ties it all together is, you know, authority can be damaging. And I think that's the thing that as I was going about this, I was hesitant to bring forth a, in, in this word because we think about people that abuse their power and yeah. that happens unfortunately quite a bit. And I think when people, I think it, this is the only one out of surrender, out of conviction, out of authority, that's the only one that kind of has that danger of, you know, we we probably all know someone who isn't a great leader or maybe is even an abusive leader. Um, but I think it, it makes being rooted in conviction and surrender so much more important. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. like, that's your, your kind of, your guidance, your kind of checkpoint. Like, am I leading out of a place of, oh, I'm so great. And, you know, pride is real. Pride is so real when you're a leader. And I can attest to that. I am not free from, you know, from that feeling of pride when you have a position of leadership, but just coming back to a place of like, okay, I'm humbled. I'm surrendered to whatever God wants. Mm -hmm. I'm checking in to see what the Holy Spirit is convicting me of. And that determines from what authority am I leading from? Am I leading from a place of selfish and prideful authority or am I leading from a place of this is authority that the Holy Spirit has released in me so I can go into the places and I can declare in Jesus name and that's when chains start to fall that's when answers start to come when there's problems that have been set out for years and that's when people start finding healing and people start finding confidence and love and and value in their life um because that's essentially the authority that we're all given Yeah. yeah but yes having conviction and surrender is a checkpoint I can't stress that enough because it's it's I think one of the most heartbreaking things especially in Christian leadership to see leaders fall um because you know you get into a swing of things of like you know I'm used to this I'm comfortable here as a leader but having conviction having surrender to keep you in a way uncomfortable so that your authority comes from the right place and so yeah that's that was kind of what my thoughts were about authority um what do you think I think one thing you touched on that I want to emphasize um a little bit is for the people who are like I've never really heard of the Holy Spirit before like your friend um what would you say to someone who's learning about the Holy Spirit for the first time knows God but doesn't really understand that aspect of God. God is a triune God. He's three (laughs) persons in one, God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy spirit. So how would you give wisdom to people who are like, Hey, I know God. I don't know the Holy spirit. What is next for me? No, that's such a great question. Um, I, I'm going to swing this back on you towards the end okay. because I think it's it's amazing just to hear how the Holy Spirit works in people individually mm-hmm. um, because it's the same Holy Spirit, yeah. but he communicates in our language, like the language that you know best. And that language is different for everyone. It's different for me than it is for you. And so I think it would be cool to hear that. But just to give a stab at that, I think just personally in my life, I didn't know of the Holy Spirit till a lot later. In my Christian walk, um, it wasn't until about four years ago that I was like, wait a minute, the Holy Spirit is a thing that I have no idea what that it even is. But at the same time, I was too scared to <laughs> admit that because at that point, I had been a Christian already for almost 10 years, around 10 years. So I didn't really know who I could ask and be like, okay, I literally don't know what the Holy Spirit is. Explain. And so you know, and no one should feel that way. And so if that's you, I'd say, you know, like go and ask, feel, feel, you know, comfortable to maybe ask a few people or even in our chats, in our, in our comments underneath, yeah. um, you know, like feel free to share your experience with the Holy Spirit or your questions about the Holy Spirit. Because I, after I started late, later in life, when I started asking about the Holy Spirit, I just was so fascinated by the way he moves. 
Um, but I, what I did was I just sat, you know, at my desk in my freshman dorm and I opened the Bible and I said, God, I know you, but I don't know the Holy Spirit. So what is the Holy Spirit? Show me something about it. Um, That's great. And it's, it's funny because back then I already felt a sense of like, you know, Lord, I know you answer my prayers. I know I talk to you and you answer my prayers. And I think I hear you speak sometimes to me, but not that often. Um, but when I started praying that, I just started hearing him speak so much. I like the first thing that I felt when I said that was this conviction that God loves me, which is funny yeah. because I read John three sixteen, which is growing up, you know, the verse that everyone knows, you know, for God to love the world, he was one and only son. And I read that verse and I was like, sitting there and I was like, are you kidding me? Like, God loves me that much. <laughs> I was like, not that I didn't know that, but I didn't know that. Like God yeah. loved me that much. And that was the Holy Spirit. I was just like, hey, like, I need you to know certain things yeah. about me right now. Um, it's the same scriptures. It's the same scripture that I read when I was seven years old as I was 17 years old. But I had this whole other conviction of the Holy Spirit saying, hey, God loves you. Hey, no, God loves you a lot. And I need you to know that. Um, and just being like, Holy Spirit, show me something. Um, another thing that I really struggled with, and I feel like this happens, especially with, you know, younger girls is I was very, um, I wasn't very confident in myself and I would always second guess. Um, and it got to a point where it was really bothering me. So I used this as an opportunity and this was an area of weakness, right? So you could use a, an area of your weakness and say like, Holy Spirit, do something, make this my strength. Holy Spirit, like, let, let me see God's power in this. And so I said one day, God, I'm, I'm, I'm done with second guessing. From now on, my first thoughts are your thoughts. Like, wow. let the first thoughts be from you. So and fun. even then, it was a lot of trial and error. I have to say, it wasn't like every first thought ever since then has been straight from God. Um, but I realized like, because I asked the Lord and periodically I asked him again, and I'm like, first thoughts are from you. First fruits That's of the day, so they're good. from you. I surrender that and I give it to you. Um, now, when I feel like, you know, I have a first thought, I used to second guess and be like, nah, should I do it? Should I do this? Or should I not do it? Should I say this? Should I not say it? I'm like, I'm going to cut out all of that. And I'm going to say, Holy Spirit, if that's from you, I'm going to do it. If that's not from you, then stop me. <laughs> Some days I just look dumb, but honestly, you just have to test it and put it to the test. A lot of times it's actually the Holy Spirit telling me to do things I wouldn't think to do. I remember very quickly one time you asked me to bring a pair of pants to church, you know, just to, yes. just to have, and something in me was like, bring two pairs. So I brought two pairs. I'm like, I don't know why I bring two pairs of pants to church. Um, and that day, I didn't know this, but God knew that I was going to run into a homeless person on the way and bring her to church. Um, she had just gone out of the hospital and she was wearing her hospital gown. Um, she stayed for a little bit of church and she said I was going to go. And before she went, she, she left. She was like, she asked me for one thing. And the thing she asked me for was a pair of pants. And I was about to say, I don't have a pair of pants because I don't typically bring it to me, bring it with me to church. <laughs> but I was like, wait, no, I have a pair of pants. And I gave her a pair of pants and she left. She didn't ask for anything else. She didn't ask for prayer. She didn't ask for a shirt. She didn't ask for food or water. She asked for a pair of pants. And that was the product of saying, Lord, first thoughts, they're from you. And sometimes they're silly, like a pair of pants. Sometimes they're less silly and they look a little more, you know, gutsy, like go up and tell that person that God loves them. Um, but you never know until you put action to it and say, Lord, I take you for your That's word it. and I'm just going to trust you. Um, but I'd say, you know, challenge, not challenge the Lord, but bring that to the Lord. Where's an area of weakness for you and say, Holy Spirit, show yourself in this area. Yeah. And because you know that if you end up strong in that area, it's not because you're strong. It's because the Holy Spirit is in you. Amen. Um, yes. And the last thing is, um, I was talking to my friend about this, the same friend I was mentioning earlier this week. Ask the Lord and say, you know, sometimes it's easy for us to see God as a father, or sometimes it's easy for us to see God through Jesus and God, you know, the way that he loves the world. He loves us through reading about Jesus. Maybe sometimes people struggle seeing God as a friend 
or maybe you struggle to see God as a father. I know sometimes people have been hurt by their fathers. They're like, I don't want to see God as a father. Sometimes people struggle to see God as a helper or a healer or um, a companion or, you know, a master even. Sometimes we're really good at seeing God certain ways, but in other times, other other forms of looking at God we struggle with. And I'd say, just ask God, God, where do you want me to see you as? Like, I know I'm great at seeing you as a master. I know that I'm great as at, uh, you know, knowing that you have authority in my life, but I want to see you as a friend. I want to walk in the streets and the sidewalks with you. And I want to, or I want to see you as a comforter. I want to, you know, go to bed at night and feel like I'm held by you. And that's when the Holy Spirit really comes in because the Holy Spirit, he's, he's there not to, not to, you know, you're like, oh, you were naughty today. Um, but he's there to, to really comfort you and ask the Holy Spirit to make himself revealed in that. Um, but that's, you know, those are just kind of random things that I thought of. What do you, what do you think to your question? Um, I think first, like, I just want to um, pray for the people who just feel like they can't see God a certain way because of certain things that have happened in their life. I've known people who are like, God, I don't want to think of God as a father because that's really painful or I can't think of God um, as someone who loves me because I've had people who've said they've loved me and they've left or, you know, different situations like that. And I just want to pray over you because I've known people who've gone through that and it's really challenging. And I want to say God is bigger than that, but then he also understands your heart. He also understands where you're at. He's a God who has so much compassion. And that word actually means that he's going through the pain with you. And I think like God is not void of knowing what that feels like. When Jesus came to earth, he experienced all the human emotions we have. And I think, first of all, what you feel is valid, but it's not always true. God can be trusted no matter what. But I also understand if you're going through a season where you just can't trust God in a certain way. And I just want to pray for that because I know he's there and he's hurting with you, but he also wants you to know that that's not the end, that there's more, that as you journey in relationship with him, as you get to know him more, there'll be more of a trust that forms, but he also accepts you right where you're at. He doesn't say that, you know, you need to have it all together to come to him. He just says, come to me. And so if you can only come to him as God, if you can only come to him as he's the Lord of your life, as if, however you can only come to him in this moment, he takes that. And that's mm-hmm. good enough because his grace is far more than you could ever imagine. And it's enough for you at this moment. So Okay. All that being said, um, mm-hmm. dear Jesus, I just thank you for all these incredible people watching. And I just pray specifically over the people who just have a hard time viewing you as their heavenly father or um, as the one in control. Um, Lord, that all the people who feel like you've left, all the people that feel like you didn't see, all the people that feel like you didn't know certain things that happened to them, Lord, that you have seen and you do know. And Lord, you care for them and says you care so deeply lord that god you are hurt when we are hurt that you are not void of emotion and you care for us so greatly that you did send your son that you loved us so much that that's what you did that you sent your son to earth to die a criminal's death so that we don't have to be separated from you for all of eternity and i just pray um that you just bring comfort that you just bring your love, that you just bring your immense joy, yeah. and that they can know that they are your children, they are your sons and daughters, that um, they are yours, they are children of the most high, and that they can um, live life from that revelation of identity, that nothing else can claim way to them, Lord Jesus, and uh, I just thank you, and in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 so good. Um, secondly, I think... Along the lines of that, I think listening to the Holy Spirit is such a reflection of learning and growing with God. Um, I was introduced to the Holy Spirit probably when I was in high school, 10th, 11th, yeah, 10th or 11th grade. I remember just thinking, I was like, Lord, I just... I don't know how I knew. I just kind of knew. I was like, mom, I feel like God's calling me to ministry. (laughs) And I don't know how I thought that, like, 
people have asked me, how do you know you're hearing the Holy Spirit? And I think it's uh, a journey for sure. I've had some moments where I thought it was the Holy Spirit and it definitely wasn't. And I've had other moments like you where I remember one day I was in college and I was like, I was going to wear a sweater and it was cold out. And I was like, I have no intention of taking this thing off. So I'm going to wear like a white t-shirt. It's kind of see-through, but it doesn't matter. I'm taking, never taking the sweater off because it's freezing. Yeah. I remember like just a little thought in my head of like, just, just pick a different t-shirt underneath. I was like, what does it matter? I'm not taking the sweater <laughs> off. I just need layers because it's cold. Right. And I was like, okay, whatever. And it ended up that night that I passed a homeless woman in like, I just felt like God's like, that's who the sweater was meant for. And it was like, in my head, I was like, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm not taking this off. And it was just like those moments where like you hear the Holy Spirit. And I think the best way to describe it as like, you just, your soul knows, like your spirit knows <laughs> what it is. Because sometimes I'm like, Lord, is this my thought? Is it your thought? And when you said second guessing, it made me think of a Bible verse that I had written on my wall growing up and I'm going to look for it real quick. So excuse me. Um, I was going to look for it and I was like, I'll totally look like I'm looking on my phone. Um, but <laughs> in the message translation, it talks about no second guessing. And that is so powerful because Philippians 2, 16 through, or sorry, 14 through 16 in the message translation says, do everything readily and cheerfully, no bickering, no second guessing allowed. Go out into yeah. the world uncorrupted, a breath of fresh air in the squalid and polluted society. Provide people with a glimpse of good living and the living God. And I love this because like you said, we can second guess ourselves. We can be like, was that God? Was it not? And I think sometimes the best thing to do is just try it. <laughs> as scary as that can yeah. be. I've prayed over people. I've spoken words over people that I felt like God has said, and it is putting yourself out there. But there's something about like, being at the end of yourself and not knowing and then just feeling like I need to tell this person that God loves them and I don't know why but I just feel like that's what I'm supposed to say and it's like it's definitely an art of listening but it's also an art of surrender like you're talking about because you cannot worry about what people think or whether it's true or whether God really said that if you're not surrendered, if you're surrendered, it doesn't matter the word that God tells you, what the Holy Spirit asks you to do, you just do it. And yeah. I think that comes down to what you're talking about. Jesus was under the authority of God. So he only did what God asked of him to do. Right. And we as Christians, as Christ followers are also under the authority of God. And so we only do what God asks us to do. And so I think we as a culture, as a society, as Christians in America specifically, need to remind ourselves of who has authority and control in our life if it's us at the end of the day we will only do what's convenient we will only do what we want to do what makes sense to us what is comfortable and yeah. i think that's where we really just need to draw a hard line in the sand and say god holy spirit help me to not live from a place of me being my own authority but mm -hmm. rather living by your word, by your Holy Spirit, and living out this life that is talked about in Philippians, where we give people a glimpse of how God's actually called us to live and who God is, because that is one of the reasons why we are here, is to share the gospel, to be disciples. Yeah. And it's really hard to be a true disciple if you're doing your own thing, because yeah. time and time again, throughout the New Testament, if you look at the gospels and you see the disciples Jesus picks 12. There are crowds that come in a mass daily to hear what he has to say, to experience his miracles. By the thousands, people will come, but yeah. they're not called disciples. They're called followers because right. it's a lot easier to follow thousands of people on social media or in life or whatever than it is to be a disciple of thousands because discipling means that you do life with somebody. And I think we okay. need to double check in our hearts and say, God, am I a disciple or am I a follower? Because I can follow when it's convenient. I can show up if there's a promise of a miracle for myself or someone I love. Right. But if I'm a disciple, I don't want to show up at the crucifixion of Jesus. If I'm a right. disciple, I don't want to show up when there's no food and everyone's mad. Right. <laughs> and so it right. takes a different level of commitment. Yeah and dedication, and also a different authority. 
Yeah. The disciples yeah. knew their, their authority came from Jesus. And yeah. so they follow him everywhere. They leave everything. They leave their occupations. They give up their lives sometimes to follow Jesus. And then That's followers, right. only when it's convenient, only when it makes sense. Everyone else is going, so will I. Oh, free food, I'm going. Mm -hmm. And so I think at the end of the day, we really need to check our hearts <laughs> and our heart posture and see where yeah. it's being. Because authority is a good indication of our level of commitment. Yeah. If the authority is us, we are committed to a certain point, but we will bow out if it gets too rough. If God's the authority, we'll follow at any cost. And that's yeah. surrender, true surrender. Yeah. And yeah. so wow. I think that's all I have to contribute, but it's been something that yeah, I've been personally wrestling with because it's easy to follow God when it makes sense, when it's easy. And I know like even for myself, like just leaning into what he says, like my husband and I are moving across the country in two weeks because of what God has said. Yeah. And that wasn't a word that we came up with. And I think it was really something about no second guessing. Like we can't yeah. say, God, did you really say this? God, is this really what you put on our heart? Is this really what you said? Because up until today, it wasn't working. <laughs> like, I think we can look sometimes at situations oh and this is in no way to put myself up, but like you will be put in situations as followers of Jesus where you're like, what God said doesn't look like it's happening. Yeah. What God said <laughs> doesn't look like it's transpiring in my life. And that's where we have to go from looking at the situation with eyes that we have in the earthly sense and going, God, give me spiritual eyes to see because I don't understand or give me faith and just show up yeah. like only you can. And I think- so good. We would be living such a different life if we really lived according to what God's word said and what his spirit led us to do. Because as we've talked before, doing life with Jesus actually is so much fun. It's yeah. not boring. It's not dull. Um, it's surprising. It's exciting. Uh, it's like a roller coaster. <laughs> so anyone who says God's boring or he's confined to a church, definitely not true. It's the Holy it's not Spirit. not living the full life. <laughs> yeah, it's the Holy Spirit. Like the Holy Spirit as his whole pizzazz. It's like, I'm just, like literally like, you know, I, I really haven't done this in a while, but you and I used to just be like, Saturdays, Holy Spirit, wherever you want us to go. Mm -hmm. we'll go. It's so fun. I promise you. It's so fun. <laughs> it, is, it is. And that takes total surrender. But how many times have we ended up, oh gosh, everywhere in Los Angeles and just- yeah talked to so many people and prayed over so many people and just like it's a journey and it's a good one and um yeah it's, it's so the best thing ever I I can't emphasize that enough yeah no I love what you brought up though like our authority like I think when we practice authority it comes from a place of knowing who our authority is Mm -hmm. So if your master is your boss, if your master is society and what society says about you, if your master is what social media is portraying, then that is going to be the authority that you lead others based on. Like, if you think uh, about it, like, yeah. if you're, you know, I'm not there yet, but I'm imagining as a parent, whatever you hold fast to, that's going to be what you teach your children, right? If you think social media is bad, you're going to teach your you're going to teach your kids that social media is bad. They're going to grow up to think that social media is bad. If you're a parent and you say, you know, your, your identity, your authority, it comes from the Lord. Well, you're going to teach your kids that that's, mm -hmm. if that's truly what you think you're going to teach your kids that. And as leaders, like if you truly think your authority comes from God, the people you lead, they're not going to be directed to your leadership. They're just going to be directed to God's leadership. And that is what we want as Christian leaders is, is we want like Jesus's whole life. He's not directing people to, to, you know, him and like his humanness. He's directing people to wow. God. in him. How many times is he saying in the Bible, like Christ in, or what is it? Not Christ in me. God, like God is in me. Like mm -hmm. I am the father. I, the father is in me, you know, like he's directing people to the leadership of God. And so I'm, I'm going to leave it off at this, but as you were speaking, I was thinking the better we are at taking God for his word. So if this is our authority, the Bible is our authority, the better we are at taking God for his word, the better we will be at taking the Holy spirit for when he nudges us or when he gives us that little nudge. Yes. If you know confidently that these words in the Bible are true, 
-hmm. then you're gonna know that when the Holy yeah. Spirit gives you just that little nudge, you're just gonna have that confidence that this is right. Yeah. And I don't have to second guess. Second guessing is not from God. If you're second guessing, then we have to go back to the root. We have to go back to this because everything in here, you can you can trust in it. You can trust that this is you know going to be true in your life because this is the divine word. It's inspired. This is inspired yes. by the Holy Spirit. This is this is what the Bible is. It's it's reading you as as you're reading it. Um, and the better we are at reading this and taking it and putting it in our hearts, the better we will be at when the Holy Spirit is, you know, in real life, like in action, giving us that little nudge, we will say yes. Um, but it's not just like, Holy Spirit, show me who you are. Let me just take this Bible and throw it to the side. No, it's not like that. It, it goes hand in hand. And so if you're reading, you know, these verses and, you know, even to, even at this day, I'm reading some of these verses and I'm like, wow, God, like really that this is the truth. But the easier it is for us to take God's word and say, yes, this is true. I received that into my life. Yeah. The easier it is just to say, Holy Spirit, whatever you want, I'm going to say yes to. And it's a lifelong process. Um, oh, totally. But, but it's, it's so true. Like what you were saying, this is, it's our lifeline. This is our authority. It leads us to a father in heaven that cares so much about us, that has such great plans for us as leaders, but more than that, us as sons and daughters, that uh, we would be totally missing out on if we didn't have, you know, this directing us to the Holy Spirit to have that access to God. Um, Come on. And so, yeah, I just, I just wanted to leave that there. Um, so good. Yeah. No, girl, I think you did a really good job at leading this. And I just want to thank you because you brought up way more than I ever expected. And I think it's so true that each of the points you brought up are so intertwined and that's how God works. Like no part of his story is like over here. And then he says something else, like all his commandments, all his words are all intertwined because that's who he is. It all comes together. And I think you presented it in a good way that keeps it that way, that keeps it the way that God intended. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you for hopping on so many weeks. Um, I appreciate it always. This is the beginning of Kimra where Kim is oh, yeah. constantly on the YouTube channel. <laughs> oh yes. No, thank you so much for having me. I think like this has really pushed me to press in too, to see like mm -hmm. God, like when I remember when you brought up this topic a few weeks ago, almost like uh, two, two months ago. Has it been two months? No, it's been like a month. This is our fourth video. So it's been a month. Okay, so a month. I was like, honestly, I don't know. And so it's required me to press in so much. And I think that it's it's just, it's so fun to be like, God, show me. Yeah. Um, yeah. God, speak, because I want to hear. Um, and so thank you for just stepping out in faith and doing this together, because it's so fun. Um, but yeah, there's things about, you know, Jesus's life of, you know, surrender conviction and authority there's things about Paul Paul's life of leadership that I just I've really tapped into and it's it's been very essential to the things that the Lord has called me to here so always an honor and always so much fun so thank you yes always well everyone thank you for tuning in this week if you have any questions uh comments please leave them in the description not the description the <laughs> comment section comment. i only can write in the description <laughs> um please write them down below we would absolutely love to have a conversation with you guys and then secondly if you have any prayer requests you can also put them in the comment section we would absolutely love to pray for you but thank you for watching and have an incredible rest of your week guys yes bye